Hello, future nurses, and welcome back to another power-packed NCLEX prep session. Every day, we bring you two to three high-yield topics with MCQS that not only test your knowledge, but also build the confidence you need to pass the exam. Consistency is the secret to success, and by staying with us daily, you will cover all the essential concepts step by step. Today's topic is levels of prevention a cornerstone of community health nursing that explains how diseases are prevented at different stages, from staying healthy in the first place to preventing complications in those already affected. This concept shows up again and again in NCLEX questions. So, get ready as we simplify it, apply it to real scenarios, and practice together. Before we continue, here's the fastest way to boost your NCLEX success. Our crash course has already helped over 5,000 students pass with confidence. You will get 100 hours of animated crash lessons, 500 hours of recorded lectures, daily live doubt clearing sessions, 5,000 authentic practice questions, 15 cat format mock tests, and a focused NCLEX ebook, all with one full year of access. Right now, you can grab this at a 70% discount, but only for a limited time. Visit our website, link is given in the description box, and start preparing smarter today. Levels of Prevention to truly understand how nurses prevent illness and promote health, we need to walk through all four levels, primordial, primary, secondary, and tertiary prevention. I will also give you clinical examples, memory tricks, and NCLEX strategies along the way. Primordial prevention, the foundation before everything. Let us begin with the most basic level, primordial prevention. Think of this as prevention at the roots of society, where the goal is to stop risk factors from even appearing in the first place. It is broader than health education. It is about shaping environments, lifestyles, and policies so that people never even develop unhealthy habits. For example, imagine a school system that bans junk food and soft drinks in its cafeteria and instead promotes fruits, vegetables, and milk. That is primordial prevention. Another example is a city designing safe bicycle lanes and playgrounds so that children develop active lifestyles early on. National policies that ban tobacco advertising to children or laws that limit alcohol sales to minors are also part of primordial prevention. N-C-L-E-X. Tip. If the intervention is about policies, laws, or early lifestyle shaping in society, before risk factors even develop, then it is primordial prevention. A quick way to remember is primordial equals policy level. Primary prevention stopping disease before it starts. Once risk factors exist, our next focus is primary prevention. Here, the goal is to keep healthy people healthy by stopping disease before it begins. Examples include immunizations like giving influenza or measles vaccines, encouraging smoking cessation, teaching about safe sex practices, promoting exercise and healthy diets, and implementing environmental safety measures such as wearing seat belts and helmets. Nurses also provide education on hand washing and proper sanitation. Classic examples of primary prevention. NCLEX. Tip. If you are preventing exposure to risk factors or preventing the onset of disease, it is primary prevention. Think. Primary equals prevent disease. Secondary prevention. Catching it. Early. Now, what if the disease process has already started silently? This is where secondary prevention comes in. The goal is early detection and prompt treatment so that the disease does not progress into something worse. For instance, mammograms to detect breast cancer early, pap smears for cervical cancer, blood pressure checks for hypertension, and cholesterol screening for cardiovascular disease are all secondary prevention. Nurses conducting school health screenings or organizing a community health fair with free blood glucose checks are performing secondary prevention. NCLEX Tip if the intervention involves screening or early diagnosis, it is always secondary prevention. Remember, secondary equals screening. Tertiary prevention, restoring health and function. Finally, we come to tertiary prevention, which deals with patients who already have established disease or disability. Here, the focus is on rehabilitation, preventing complications, and improving quality of life. Examples include physical therapy for stroke survivors, Cardiac rehabilitation after a myocardial infarction, support groups for patients with substance use disorder, or teaching a diabetic patient about foot care to prevent ulcers and amputations. NCLEX Tip If the intervention is aimed at reducing disability, preventing complications, or restoring function, 
Then it is tertiary prevention. Think. Tertiary equals therapy slash rehab. Let me quickly share the easiest shortcut to NCLEX success. Our crash course has already guided more than 5,000 students to pass on their first try. With 100 hours of animated crash lessons, 500 hours of recorded lectures, daily live classes, 5,000 exam-style questions, 15 cat mock tests, and a focused NCLEX ebook, you will have everything you need in one place. Plus, you get a full year of unlimited access. Right now, it is available at a 70% discount for a limited time only. Click the WhatsApp link below to claim your free 5-day trial and start your NCLEX journey today. Now, back to topic pudding. It all together. Timeline of prevention. To make this easier, let us imagine prevention as a timeline. Primordial prevention. Stop the risk factors from ever appearing. Policies, laws, healthy environments. Primary prevention. Stop the disease from starting. Vaccines, education, safety. Secondary prevention. Catch the disease early. Screenings, diagnostic tests. Tertiary prevention. Restore after disease. Rehab, support groups, long-term care. Quick formula. Primordial equals policy, primary equals prevent, secondary equals screen, tertiary equals treat slash rehab. Clinical Pearl. To lock this in for NCLEX success, remember, primordial equals prevent the risk factors, primary equals prevent the disease, secondary equals screen and detect early tertiary, equals therapy slash rehab after disease. It's time to see the multiple choice questions regarding this. Question 1. Imagine a nurse advocating for a government policy that restricts junk food advertisements targeted at children. Which level of prevention does this represent? The options are A. Primordial prevention B. Primary prevention C. Secondary prevention or D. Tertiary prevention The correct answer here is A. Primordial prevention Why? Because this is an action at the policy level. Aiming to stop unhealthy habits before they even develop. It is not primary prevention because there is no direct health teaching. It is not secondary because it is not screening. And it is not tertiary because no disease has yet occurred. Question 2. A nurse teaches a group of high school students about the dangers of vaping and smoking. Which level of prevention is this? Options A. Primordial B. Primary C. Secondary D. Tertiary The correct answer is B. Primary prevention. This is because health education aimed at preventing exposure to risk factors before disease develops always falls under primary prevention. Primordial would be a law that bans vaping access for teenagers, secondary would involve screening for lung disease, and tertiary would be rehabilitation after lung damage. Question 3. A nurse organizes a mammogram screening program in the community. What level of prevention is this? Options are A. Primary, B. Secondary, C. Tertiary or D. Primordial? The correct answer is B. Secondary prevention. Why? Because mammograms are designed to detect disease at an early treatable stage. This is not primary because it is not prevention through vaccines or education, not tertiary because it is not rehabilitation, and not primordial because it is not shaping risk factors. Question 4. A patient recovering from a myocardial infarction attends a cardiac rehabilitation program. Which level of prevention is this? The options are A. Secondary, B. Primary, C. Tertiary, or D. Primordial. The correct answer is C. Tertiary prevention. This is because the patient already has heart disease, and the focus now is on rehabilitation, restoring health, and preventing further complications. Question 5. The nurse arranges for free blood pressure checks at a community health fair. Which level of prevention is this? Options? A. Primary, B. Secondary, C. Tertiary, or D. Primordial. The correct answer is B. Secondary prevention. Screening activities like this are always secondary because they help catch disease early before it causes complications. Primary would be teaching about a low-salt diet. Tertiary would be rehab after heart failure. And primordial would be preventing sedentary habits in childhood. Question 6. A nurse provides counseling and physiotherapy sessions for a stroke patient to regain mobility. Which level of prevention is this? Options A. Primordial B. Primary C. Secondary or D. Tertiary The correct answer is D. Tertiary prevention. 
Rehabilitation after a stroke is the classic example of tertiary prevention. Primordial would have been preventing risk factors like smoking at a young age, primary would be controlling blood pressure before a stroke happens, and secondary would be early detection of hypertension. Question 7. A community law bans alcohol sales to individuals under 18 years of age. Which level of prevention is this? Options? A. Primordial. B. Primary. C. Secondary. D. Tertiary. The correct answer is A. Primordial prevention. This is policy-level action to prevent risk factors from ever developing. Education programs would be primary, screening for alcoholism would be secondary, and rehabilitation for alcohol dependence would be tertiary. Question 8. A nurse administers the annual influenza vaccine to elderly patients. What level of prevention does this illustrate? Options? A. Primary. B. Secondary. C. Tertiary. D. Primordial. The correct answer is A. Primary prevention. Vaccination is one of the best examples of primary prevention because it prevents disease before it even occurs. Screening for flu would be secondary, rehab after flu complications would be tertiary, and primordial would be preventing poor living conditions that increase flu spread. Question 9. A nurse teaches a diabetic patient proper foot care to prevent ulcers and amputations. Which level of prevention is this? Options A. Primordial B. Primary C. Secondary D. Tertiary The correct answer is D. Tertiary prevention. Why? Because the disease, diabetes, already exists and the nurse is preventing complications and disability through rehabilitation-style teaching. Question 10. Finally, a nurse initiates a school program that includes daily exercise and healthy meals for children to prevent obesity later in life. Which level of prevention is this? Options A. Primary B. Secondary C. Tertiary or D. Primordial The correct answer is D. Primordial prevention. This is because the intervention prevents the emergence of risk factors like obesity before they even occur by shaping healthy behaviors in children.